Again, the bus departed at about 8.14 a.m. Central Time this morning, 6.14 p.m. in Baikonur. The crew then arrived at Building 254, which you're seeing right now, about uh, 8.59 a.m. Central Time, uh, 6.59 p.m. in Baikonur. Each crew member undergoes final medical exams and then gets suited up in the Sokol launch and entry suits, which you're seeing now. The suits were then pressurized to ensure the integrity of their seals. The actual suit-up activities began around, began around 9.44 a.m. Central Time, 7.44 p.m. in Baikonur, about four and a half hours prior to launch. Once the suit-up activities were completed and the pressure in the suits was verified to be airtight, the crew prepared to depart for the launch site. Beforehand, from behind a protective pane of glass, to maintain their quarantine status, the crew spoke to various Roscosmos and NASA managers, as well as their friends and family. This is the last chance for the crew to talk with everyone before they head out to the launch pad. It's a chance for each of them to relax a little bit while the others are going through the leak checks. You can see here behind the protective pane of glass uh, in this shot, Alexei Ovchina, now Nick Haig, uh, preparing to go in the seat for those final, final pressure checks. And their fellow crewmates will have a chance to go up to the microphone in front of the protective pane of glass and uh, have a quick conversation before heading out to the launch pad. Standing above Nick Haig during this pressure check, uh, Expedition 59 backup crew member Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency.
Again, this is a chance for the crew members to speak with friends and family, the last chance they'll get before they actually head over to the launch pad and go inside the Soyuz rocket, which they are currently in. This, of course, a uh, replay of some of today's activities. Alexei Ovchinin in the middle, uh, flanked to his left, our right, by NASA astronaut Nick Haig. Sorry, are you planning on doing any handstands in space? <laughs> it might be the easiest handstand I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Deck called and just wanted me to confirm that there will be a flight check for you. Definitely, I made sure to tell him. So I think literally the last thing I said to him was, don't worry, I'll wear a life jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank I've been trying to recruit Scrabble players, but um, no one seems to be as excited about it as I Is there a Cyrillic power set? Nice strategy? Lieutenant Colonel Katie Haig, wife of Nick Haig, uh, one of the last times the two will be able to speak uh, this close to each other, of course, behind a protective pane of glass to maintain their quarantine status. Your successful completion of the entire flight program. This is the head of Roscosmos, Dmitry Rogozin, making final luck. remarks to the Expedition 59 crew in person, again behind the uh, protective pane of glass before they head out to the launch site. Best of luck. May you perform the program in full and return soon. All the best to you. Thank you. You all look like you're ready to go fly, and I can tell you that ground teams in Houston are ready, teams in Moscow are ready to support you with uh, all you're going to do. Uh, on Associate all Administrator of Human Exploration Enjoy Office, Bill Gerstenmeyer, from NASA, providing some final remarks to the Expedition 59 crew. Of course, many other heads of the agency, both Roscosmos and uh, International Space Station present, providing last remarks after the friends and family again before the 59 crew heads out to the launch pad. Take care of each other. This, of course, a uh, replay of some of today's activities. At about 11.14 a.m. Central Time, 9.14 p, 9 p.m. in Baikonur, the crew members then walked out and boarded their bus for the ride to launch pad one. Waving to some of the members uh, standing outside, photographers, media present as well. The commander of the vehicle is reporting. The vehicle is ready and we are ready.
launch command issued for ignition. Launch, launch command has been issued. Telecom second umbilical second tower umbilical separated. Tower separate. Booster ignition. Engine turbo pumps at flight speed. Engines at maximum thrust, lift off. And lift off. We have lift off of lift Nick Hay, Christina Cook, and Alexei Ochinin now on their way to the International Space Station. Good first stage board. performance so far. And the Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters in single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length, 24 feet in diameter, burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes, six seconds of the flight. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling great. Forty seconds. The vehicle is stable. Copy all. This is Burlock One. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling very well. One minute into the flight, everything looking good so far. The vehicle itself is now traveling at more than a thousand miles per hour. Is a nominal copy all. This is Burlock One. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling well. As we lose sight of the vehicle transitioning to an animation, everything looking good so far. This first stage with the four strap on boosters will continue to burn until one minute fifty eight seconds. Eighty seconds, everything is nominal. Copy all. The crew is feeling great, everything is nominal on board. Good reports to the crew. About ten more seconds, seconds of this first stage. Uh, thermal control system parameters are nominal. Copy all. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling well. Good call that the escape tower has been jettisoned. On time, the four booster separations have been confirmed. confirmed. That core stage continuing on as the second stage. The First launch shroud will be jettisoned at 2 minutes 37 seconds into the flight. Soyuz vehicle traveling well over 3,000 miles per hour. 140 seconds. The launch vehicle parameters are nominal. Copy all. Everything is nominal on board. Good core stage performance. The launch shroud has been jettisoned. The rocket is now at 48 miles high. The uh, display five uh, control distance uh, display has been activated, illuminated. Copy all. 180 seconds. The vehicle is stable. Good report so far. This core Copy stage will continue to burn until the four minute 43 second mark. The crew is feeling great. Good reports from the crew. Over three minutes from launch, the Soyuz vehicle traveling about 5,000 miles per hour. 200 seconds. Second stage. The Soyuz core stage is performing as expected. That core stage, 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter, with a single engine and four fuel chambers, providing between 178,000 and 222,000 pounds of thrust for its three-minute, 28-second burn. This stage will continue to burn until the 4 minute 43 second, second mark. The Soyuz uses what's called a hot staging technique. It'll be, uh, the third stage will ignite this while the second is still burning. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling well. It'll happen in that lattice structure you see at the center of the vehicle of this animation. Over four minutes into the flight, everything looking good so far. Two hundred and fifty seconds. Your pitch roll are nominal. Everything is nominal on board. Four and a half minutes into the flight, everything looking good. About fifteen seconds until the ignition of that third stage.
good separation of that second stage. Second stage separation is confirmed. This is Burlock 1. I confirm that. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling great. Three hundred and ten seconds, the spacecraft is stable. Good Thursday's performance, everything looking good. This booster will continue to burn until the eight minute forty five second mark. Just over a four minute burn. Three hundred and thirty seconds. Thursday's this time the Swiss vehicle well over a hundred miles above the Earth. This is Burlock 1. Copy all. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling well. The single engine of the Soyuz is third stage, providing 67,000 pounds of thrust. Again, burns until the 8 minute 45 second mark into the flight. Now just over 6 minutes uh, after launch. 160 seconds. Your pitch roll are nominal. Copy all. This is Burlock 1. Everything is nominal on board. Six minutes, 30 seconds into the flight, crew feeling good. Everything looking good so far for this last stage before the Soyuz itself is inserted into orbit. Eight minutes, 45 seconds after launch. 400 seconds, the spacecraft is stable. Copy all, everything is nominal on board, and the crew is feeling great. This is Burlock 1. Copy all. Over seven minutes into the flight. Four hundred and thirty seconds. Third stage thrusters are operating nominally. Copy all. This is Burlock One. Everything is nominal on board, and uh, the crew is feeling great. We are standing by for third stage separation at twenty-two, twenty-two fifty-six. Copy all. Everything looking good, 7 minutes 45 seconds into the flight at this time. The Soyuz vehicle traveling well over 13,500 miles per hour. Once the third stage delivers the Soyuz to orbit and the module is separated, a series of pre-programmed commands will be executed to prepare the Soyuz for orbital operations. These stored commands, called time-tagged commands, allow many of the Soyuz systems to be automatically activated by onboard computers seconds. at precise times stored in those computers. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling great. This is Burlock 1. About 30 more seconds of this third stage burn and separation. 500 seconds. The flight is nominal. Everything is nominal on board. Burlock 1. We have good third stage separation. Third stage separation is confirmed. Stage cutoff and separation occurring. Burlex, congratulations on the insertion, orbit insertion. Mission Control Moscow is standing by, and they're here.
Uh, Rowling? Rowling? Did you want to take a, a voice check from him? <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. One, two, three. All right. Okay. Joel Montalbano, Deputy ISS Program Manager. Joel, skylighting midnight ride to the International Space Station underway. Uh, your thoughts as you saw the Soyuz vehicle and the new crew take off. Uh, a Soyuz rocket and Soyuz spacecraft and launch of those two together brings an excitement to human spaceflight across the globe. An incredible launch today. You know, this will bring our crew on orbit back to six people will allow us to continue operating an incredible research program on board the International Space Station. We have scientific experiments inside that the crew's doing. We have experiments looking out at the universe, experiments looking down on Earth, and that data is used to benefit humanity. We're doing exploration initiatives on board, things that are going to continue our activities in low Earth orbit and take us to beyond. Five months ago, uh a tough day here when uh, the launch abort occurred, but uh, patience and perseverance pays off for Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin. What about these last five months in terms of the program, the partnership coming together to make this launch possible? We have incredible honor to work with uh, the Russian engineers. Their uh, dedication to excellence is a testament of what we saw today. It's a pleasure that we get to work with them uh, and the other partners across the globe to make this International Space Station just an incredible platform that we use every day that, and I hope that we'll use and continue to use for many years to come. Rolling. Rolling? Mm -hmm. Bill Gerstenmeyer, Associate Administrator for Human Exploration. Bill. Um, Cardinal rules of spaceflight, patience and perseverance, and the last five months have been tough, but uh, your thoughts as you saw the Soyuz take off to culminate the last five months of getting back into the game, if you will. Yeah, again, I mean, it's great to see the three crew heading towards station and to see the Soyuz work, and I think it's especially sweet to see uh, Nick and Alexei on board and, uh, and get a second chance to go back to space and, and this time to see everything work absolutely nominal during ascent, to see them uh, get to orbit, to see them on their way to space station. So I can hardly wait till they get docked to station and we have the station up to six crew again. You know, we've talked uh, many times before during the launch. It's heart pounding, it's nail biting, it's all of that. What was going through your mind as you watched the Soyuz climb to orbit? Again, I think when I go out to the launch pad and I get to see the rocket, I think of all the technicians and all the people that have spent, you know, many years and decades, you know, putting the spacecraft together and getting it ready to go fly. And, and this vehicle has a design that goes back many, many decades. And just think the engineers with slide rules designed this vehicle and, and put it together. And then today we get to see it go to this state-of-the-art international research facility called the Space Station. Just a tremendous accomplishment, and it shows what, what we can do as a people if we all work together, we put aside our differences, we look to the stars, and we push forward into the future. A very, very rich uh, program of activity lies ahead in the next several weeks, if not months. Spacewalks, research, visiting vehicles, uh, the commercial crew program pressing ahead with uh, the next series of flights. How, how complicated will the rest of this year be to set the plate for years to come? I mean, this is a really, really busy period. We've got the, the cargo launches coming up. There's three of those heading forward for us. We've got the EVAs, the spacewalks to get things done. We've got lots of new research on orbit. Uh, many firsts that will be occurring during this expedition. So a very, very busy time. And I just wish folks could take time to, to spend a little bit of time to go out on the web and look and see what research is being done on station and see what it's like to be with the crews. And, and hopefully the crews will be on social media and folks will be able to follow what they're doing. Christine's family and friends were here. They were very excited about her launch and what she's going to do. And maybe she can reach out and get that next generation of young engineers and scientists and researchers and and accountants and lawyers all excited about space so we can keep doing these amazing things we got to see today here in Kazakhstan.